Hello, we're John and Elizabeth. We're back in the water. This is the story of today, getting us um, out of the shed, into the water, fully rigged, and on our way back to Portsmouth on what is a absolutely gorgeous, but um, slightly chilly uh, Monday evening. Yeah. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you very much for watching. Well, last year when the boat was due to go into the water in April, the date moved very slightly at the last minute and neither Elizabeth or I could be there. And so James and the team put the boat in the water and put the, the rig on. So um, this time, uh, it having moved a little bit around again, uh, we definitely made some time and we were down uh, nice and early to see Corrick come out of the shed. Um, absolutely brilliantly bright day and I thought she looked rather spectacular as she inched her way out. Um, yeah, very pleased to be there and to see it all happening. Extra bit of time that we had with the boat in the shed meant that we had been able to come down on, uh, I think it was the previous Monday, and put a coat of wax on the boat and give her a little bit of a clean inside. Of course she'd been inside the shed for nearly six or seven weeks at this point and therefore was looking just a little bit dusty but um, from the outside everything looked really rather terrific and um, she made her way round the yard in order to get ready to be put in the water. Very unusual to see the shed quite as empty as this. Uh, I think it didn't last long there were two boats in before the close of play that day as well. Well, once the boat had moved from the cradle to the sling, she was then held in the slings and George was able to very quickly apply a coat of conventional antifoul where we hadn't been able to get the copper coat to. While all that was happening, the mast was wheeled round and the uh, Windex and the fittings for the top of the mast were brought down and put them on and this was a really good opportunity just before the rig went up to have a very good look at all the fixtures and fittings, check them all, make them secure, make sure they were secure and check any um, signs of movement. Um, then the boat gets moved over, over towards the dock and gently lowered in and what they do is they um, lower it down uh, just to the right sort of height that you can step on board. Um, once it was down at that level, I stepped on board, as did James, and the boat got lowered all the way into the water, and it's held in the slings, but uh, uh, under its own weight, and that gives you an opportunity to uh, have a very quick look at all of the hull fittings and just make sure that, that nothing has gone badly awry whilst you're still in a situation where the boat can be pulled out immediately. So the boat was down to this sort of level. Uh, as I say, James and I uh, stepped on board once she'd gone all the way down and the weight was off the slings. Once the boat was in the water, we cycled all the um, skin fittings and just checked them all, but also made sure that we burped the stern gland. So just gave this a little bit of a squeeze and make sure the water filled into the stern tube itself. Once we were pretty sure that we weren't going to um, sink, we drove the boat out and parked it just underneath the crane. And uh, George here was holding the um, guy line for the mast as and James then stepped onto the coach roof and controlled the crane in order to um, drive us to the point where the mast would drop straight in. Obviously this is a keel stepped mast and we, we talked about that ages and ages in that go but it goes through the, um, the, the fit, it goes through the collar on the deck, it has to go straight down so James there is controlling the uh, crane, John is down below and waiting for the foot of the mast to engage with the, with the plate that sits down there at the bottom. Um, all the fixtures and fittings are connected so there's George just f passing the aerial connections and the electrical connections down 
because um, they they come out right at the base of the mast and need to be kept clear as the mast engages just as it goes down. And just looking at this in um, sort of time lapse, it comes in, take the full stay off to one side, get the mast in exactly the right place, drop it right down, then very quickly get the shrouds on, get the full stay on um, so that everything is nice and tight, get that wound up uh, and get the back stay on as well. Um, once that's all on, and that doesn't take very long, but uh, this this berth is pretty busy, um, and therefore once we'd got the uh, initial uh, the shrouds on the force day, the back stay, etc., with just um, not very much weight in it, we just very quickly then motored onto a waiting pontoon where we could gently do the rest of the work. We got ourselves over to the um, waiting pontoon. Uh, George at this point was putting the right sort of tensions and you can see him just uh, feeling the weight in the shrouds there and looking up the mast and just getting it all exactly lined up. Uh, very much a uh, by eye sort of job this. Um, in the meantime I was getting the various lines that we were going to need to put on then we managed to get the the boom in place and once we got that secured in, uh, in into the centre um, we looked around and we realised that we had um, not brought the kicker down with us so Elizabeth kindly disappeared off to go and get that but once we'd got the boom on got the main sheet on um, well the gas strut arrived and so did the sails um, we then spent a little bit of time getting those all sorted out by this stage George had finished everything he needed to do um, there was a tiny little bit of taping up but by this stage the boat was um, I think pretty much ours again so to speak um, so we got all that sorted out useful reminder of just exactly where everything was um, and then once we would got the gut strut on we were just a few minutes away or from getting the sails on and then being able to go while Elizabeth's up on the bow it's been a properly busy day today we arrived uh, well we had to move cars and all that sort of thing because you're moving a boat from one place to another and the vehicles need to be in the right place but we got down um, pretty much on time to this time the boat moved which is great a uh, tiny flash of anti-fouling onto the very bottom then the boat went in then the rig went in all of that went swimmingly well um, then slowly put everything back together again um, found everything which is always a good sign um, uh, wired everything up the mast the um, instruments or the log rather um, and all of that um, seems to have gone together very nicely it's not quite as breezy as we'd have liked it would have been nice to have gone for a bit of a sail today but it's super high pressure and very very little in the way of wind um, but we're punching oh it's springs and we're just ahead of the tide which is good um, looking forward to getting back to Portsmouth just a little bit in the dark um, and we'll put the boat to bed um, and be good to go for next weekend so in a tiny bit of a rush to get ahead of the tide so we left and it was very benign conditions but um, today in the daylight I've decided to go around the upper deck and I thought I might just cover off a few things that were mentioned to me by George and James as we were putting the rig in that I think I want to remember for next time and might be useful to you guys. Um, it's really just to do with um, tiny bits of good practice that might be helpful. The one thing we're doing when we put the split pins in is that we're making sure that the the, the ring is uppermost so that it um, doesn't fall out and we're making sure that these arms here are splayed probably at an angle of about 30 degrees something like that uh, very much with the idea that um, they are enough splayed that it stops it coming out but if you needed to you would be um, you would be able to very quickly put a pair of pliers onto it, squeeze them together and force it out, um, thereby allowing you to release it quickly in an emergency. The other thing we're doing when there are um, these here and slightly sharp edges 
is just putting a little dob of silicon on it to stop it moving and this this happens up at the top of the mast as well where we can't get up there to inspect it frequently but just to avoid any possibility of something snagging on that and that look there should allow us to get to the split pin if we need to but stop it snagging on anything should we run anything over it the other thing it's worth chatting about is that uh, when we put the rig in we put it in very quickly just got the um, split pins in and connected it up very loosely before we put any tension onto it then we went to the uh, holding berth where we uh, then put the boom on and the kicker and those sorts of things at the same time George was putting the tension onto the rig so um, I've seen people do this where they take one of the halyards and use it to measure the, the um, distances. That's a little bit unreliable, I think, um, talking to George. And what he was saying, and I think it makes perfect sense, is so long as your shrouds have been made up as a pair, and they normally have been, then they should be exactly the same length and therefore connect them up um, such that there is exactly the same number of threads showing on each side. Um, then look straight up the mast and put a bit of tension on each of the shrouds in turn to see whether it moves at all um, and you can see it move and therefore you know when it's straight and tension it up from there and get the right sort of feel into it but putting one turn uh, or rather a half turn on on each side as you tension it up don't tr try and do one side then the other get it roughly in the right place and then half a turn on each side um, and each set of the cap shrouds and the diagonals as you as you go um, but I've just counted the threads on all of the shrouds and they're, they're all exactly the same. I think the, the best measure is the shroud itself. So I've been over the boat, boat with something of a fine tooth comb, checked just about everything that I think there is to check. Um, really happy with how things are, happy to go sailing. Um, I hope this has been a useful video. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching.